Here we go. Less than 10 minutes to knock down all these weeds that was just as high as these weeds over here. Almost as tall as the corn in some places. Once again, the garden got away from me. Matter of fact, we go back here, you can actually see how tall the weeds were. Because I ain't done nothing to this either. <laughs> you can actually see where I started pulling them. And then I was like, you know, I have that tiller for that. I just was too lazy to drag it out. But you can see like the difference. This row got tilled. This over here got tilled. See how clean the row is. This row, I pulled the weeds yesterday evening. And I pulled the weeds on these rows yesterday evening. And they're just not as clean. Not only that, the uh, tiller does chop the weeds up. Helps mix it in with the ground. Now there is one thing about tall weeds and these small electric tillers. This is the Sunjay TJ04E. I can't remember if this is the bigger one or the smaller one because I have two of them, two different sizes. When you're doing tall weeds, weeds will get wrapped around the tines. And uh, that's really an issue that these tillers were built with a lot of torque but they don't have a lot of tine speed. So on tough weeds, instead of it cutting the weeds up, it basically just wraps around until the weed snaps off. Now it will cut up some. You can see some of these weeds are chopped up, but it just depends on how tough the weed is. And uh, I just basically keep using it until, now if it stops, if it actually gets so clogged up it stops, I gotta stop and unclog it. And it don't really take that long because I've already had to do that one other time right over here. Matter of fact, it's into this row. Uh, some of the corn stalks I accidentally knocked down. and Well, it wasn't that I knocked them down. It's that the lower leaves got wrapped around the tines. And then it kind of pulled the stalk into it and then got wrapped around it. And <laughs> you know, but I just, I needed to get this done because here in about another... I don't know two weeks this corn will be ready to harvest and it's not I mean deer got in here and knocked some of it down raccoons got in here and ate some of it when it was young and uh, mostly on this these last two rows is where that happened at like there's just not a whole lot of corn you can actually see there's like a 10 foot section of corn gone here that either didn't grow at all because the deer knocked it down, the raccoons ate it, or it grew, grew deformed, like that one and that one there on the end. And that's because what happens is the raccoons would come out here and knock this corn over at the ground in order to eat what's inside of the stalk. Let me see if I can find any of those. And basically that stunts the growth of the corn and then it just won't ever recover once once it's there that's kind of like all these short ones you see that's what happened to them the raccoons got in there and they they bite they bite at the bottom until it falls over and then they eat part of the stalk and then it'll try to self-heal but it just never it never bounces back i mean corn is actually part of the grass family and you know if you cut grass it grows back and uh, corn is a, kind of the same way. If you cut it, it'll still grow back. It just don't necessarily come back as well. Some of these are probably a little too close together. I don't know why these rows over here are so close together and those rows over there are so far apart. I planted on the same day. Did I just do something different? Like these, these last two rows are really close together and then the first one, two, three rows are, you know, foot foot and a half apart which is what i really prefer or maybe i just had some extra corn and i just planted it here on the ends because i did notice it's mostly here on this end that's probably only four to six inches apart and uh those stalks being crowded would have never would have never done good but there's a lot of places like you know this in here was one of the ones that got the leaf got wrapped around the tine they got bent over uh, you know, some corn's better than no corn, and I'll just take whatever I get. Um, this is just a test anyways, right? But I really wanted to just showcase this electric tiller. I do use these. 
as you can tell i've not had much time to use it <laughs> but i did have some free time today in between my day job and working out so i wanted to get in here and get these weeds knocked down because i literally haven't had time practically since i did this and uh, i just wanted to show you that is a lot of times how i use these tillers I run them down the rows if the rows are wide enough. I use it to knock down places that don't have nothing planted in it. I didn't plant anything I was going to plant. You know, a fall garden over here, and I just can't keep up. So you do what you do, and and when you can't when you can't get to it, it just don't get done. I didn't get to it, so. But I did get the test garden done. That was really my main concern. I wanted to get the soil tested. By me knocking this these weeds down, I'll probably do this again in the fall. Probably about the time we get our first frost that'll kill off a lot of this. Then I'll till it under really good. I'll till all the corn stalks under and everything. I usually do the whole entire garden. Then what happens is over winter, this stuff breaks down and that's your nutrients for next year. Um, about the only thing I really do, like I'm not a huge fertilizer person. Sometimes I'll do triple 10 in the spring. Sometimes I won't. A lot of times I'll do like rabbit poo. And uh, one thing though I use religiously, I don't do it every year, usually every other year. And if you never heard of it, it's called Azomite. Azomite is the brand. It's kind of think of it like macronutrients for your garden like your normal fertilizer comes with nitrogen potassium and uh why did i just forget what the rest of it is uh, i know it's the symbols of k but it's not actually a k nitrogen Man, this chemo brain stuff and memory loss sucks. Either way, as you all know what I'm talking about, the MPK. Is it phosphates? Nitrogen, potassium, phosphate. Either way, you guys know what I'm talking about. But like, azomite is everything but that, that plants need, that we never put in our soils. And what I have found, now I didn't treat it this year, but I will next year when I do the whole garden. Um, what I have found is everything grows in that stuff crazy. I actually call it crack cocaine for plants, if you want to know the truth. That's why I tell everybody it is, like crack cocaine for plants. Um, I buy it off of Amazon. I don't remember what size bag it is. I think it's a 30 pound bag. I'll go up here and look. I have a, I have a whole bag of it and part of another bag. Uh, it might be a 40 pound bag. Anyways, there's the bag right there, brand new bag, haven't even opened it up yet. Right there, uh, nope, somewhere around here I know I've got another bag, it's partially full. But that's it, and you basically put it on like a fertilizer, just sprinkle it on the ground. Um, a lot of times I will do individual plants, I've shown it in a lot of my videos. Uh, whenever I plant like fruit trees, I'm always showing me sprinkling this white powder around in the planting holes. You can do plants that way too. You can actually plant, put the azomite in the planting holes. Or you can do it as a general ground treatment where you treat the whole entire ground. Um, only other thing I got going on is grapes. My grapes this year are doing really great so far. I don't know if you can see like how many grapes. There's, a, there's hundreds of grapes this year. Normally, I mean, I don't get this many grapes. <laughs> I ain't gonna joke. I don't normally have this many on this vine, but this year, just the weird weather pattern and there wasn't a lot of pest. And uh, here in another couple months, these will be ready to go. And I can't wait. Anyways, my cat's bugging me. So I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.